Afghanistan, the graveyard of empires, the land that led to the demise of conquest like those of Alexander the Great 2,200 years ago, where the USSR and the United States of America, two superpowers of the world, met their match. However, long before these nations fought to secure the dusty hills of Kandahar and the cliff faces of Kabul, another great superpower would take their turn attempting to conquer this unforgiving land. In the 1800s, the ever-expanding British Empire would take their gamble at Afghanistan, and eventually, they too would abandon their fruitless occupation of the nation. And yet amidst all the tragedy that clings to the country, on the 12th of September 1897, the British Empire would achieve a minor yet spectacular triumph in the small village of Saragari. In a battle celebrated annually by the Sikhs, forgotten by most, and quite possibly, the greatest last stand in history. Since 1857, the British had been struggling to maintain control of the crown jewel of the empire, India. Several waves of rebellion had struck blows into their domination of the area, which nearly displaced their forces. In order to combat the uprising sweeping through India, the British had to continuously fight off smaller rebellions. At the northwestern front of the British Raj, 80 kilometers south of Peshawar, a string of forts were set up. These forts were placed to project power into the mountainous tribal areas and to help them consolidate their hold on the region. The two forts that concern us here were Fort Lockhart and Fort Gulistan, which lay six kilometers apart, divided by a valley with a small village, the village of Saragari. In this village, the British had set up a signaling post, whose purpose was to relay information between the two forts. This post was manned by a small contingent of the 36th Sikh Regiment, consisting of 21 men. This regiment was led by a Havildar, their term for sergeant, named Ishar Singh. On the morning of September 12, 1897, this group of soldiers arose and performed their usual morning routines. For the last 10 days, they had faced off against small contingents of the Afghan tribesmen. These tribesmen, unbeknownst to the Sikhs, had been performing reconnaissance missions, surveying nearby forts and estimating their strengths and weaknesses. However, the Sikhs did know that something was afoot, making note of the recent probe attacks in the area. That morning, as the soldiers cleansed themselves and affixed their turbans, the lookout began to shout, reporting a sighting of a growing horde on the horizon. The men took up their defensive positions and the signalman, Gurmukh Singh, the youngest soldier at 19 years old, made contact with Colonel Houghton at Fort Lockhart. The signalman alerted Fort Lockhart of the current situation. The fort replied, claiming they counted at least 14 standards, meaning at least 10,000 tribesmen. The garrison could not leave their forts undefended. This left the 21 Sikhs alone as the ensuing mob of 10,000 Afghans descended upon them. The Sikhs would hold off the incoming onslaught as long as they could, buying enough time for the forts to reinforce. The men barred the gates, piled ammunition crates, and took up their defensive positions along the outer walls. There was not a murmur of mutiny or an attempt at desertion. Each man was ready to sacrifice his life. The first wave of Afghan tribesmen approached the fort, attempting to climb the walls and break through the gates, but they were halted by the rhythmic hail of Sikh bullets. Man after man fell as blood soaked the ground, painting the rock and sand a bright scarlet. The first wave of tribesmen rolled back, only giving away for an even larger second wave. 10,000 men halted by the disciplined fire of Sikh soldiers. Eventually, a Sikh fell dead, blood erupting from his chest. Then a hand reached the top wall as Afghan soldiers pulled themselves onto the battlements. A melee erupted. As the sound of a steel and bone drummed through the air, another attack is repulsed, but now Sikh blood has been shed. The dead were carried into the inner walls of the forts, each corpse a tragic death, a friend, and a valuable comrade held dear. The number of casualties suffered by the Afghan tribesmen greatly outnumbered those of the Sikhs. The tribesmen resorted to bribery, shouting over the wall. They promised the Sikh soldiers immeasurable wealth, a hundredfold of what a sepoy of the British army earned. They even offered safety and positions of power. Any thought of desertion in the minds of the Sikhs was triumphed by their discipline, patriotism, and sense of duty. Suddenly, Fort Lockhart reported that the surrounding brush and shrubbery had been set alight, creating a thick cloud of smoke. And through the smoke charged more Afghan tribesmen, attempting a flank on the signal post from the eastern wall. 
Ishar Singh deployed a group of his men to their exposed flank, and shots were exchanged. Once more, the Sikhs prevailed, triumphing over the dozens of tribesmen that lay in pools of their own blood. Another wave of tribesmen thundered forward, this time their numbers too great to be outdone by the skill and valor of the soldiers. With each Sikh that fell, ten Afghans were struck down, but ultimately, the Sikhs were forced into a retreat. Only a handful of soldiers remained now. Ishar Singh ordered his men to retreat into the safety of the inner wall. However, he knew that in order for the men to safely fall back, someone would have to cover the retreat and prevent the tribesmen from breaking in through the inner wall. And so he did what had to be done. As he commanded his men to retreat, he lurched forward into the horde, roaring. Body after body fell at his feet until eventually his luck inevitably ran out and he was killed. The Havildar's death was not in vain, as the rest of his men had managed to take their shelter and fortify their second layer of defense. The sergeant's tragic death did little to damage the determination of the remaining soldiers. Only about ten men remained now, including the signalmen. Despite their consistent barrage after barrage onto the horde, the pounding of gunstocks took its toll on the gate. The doors gave way to the enraged attackers who had expected a swift victory over an enemy they thought to be weak. The inner gate was flooded and eventually all the Sikhs had perished but one, the young signalman, who had not budged from his position the entire battle. In his small tower, the young sepoy sent out one final message, permission to take arms, and then a response, permission granted. The teenager packed his signaling gear, took out his rifle and affixed his bayonet. He was the last man standing the last line of defense for a small walled village at the edge of an empire. From this point on, all information comes not from the Sikh signalman's records, but from the observers at Fort Lockhart and few Pashtuns who were captured by the British. The young man moved to the entrance of his post. The men at Lockhart cheered as he killed one Pashtun, then another. The tribesmen backed off and the men in the fort gave a cheer, hoping for a miracle. However, their hopes were dashed as they saw smoke rising from the tower their attackers had set the tower ablaze. In his final moments, the signalman Gurmukh Singh was reported to have shouted the Sikh battle cry as his lungs filled with smoke and flames wreathed his body. He said, Bolo se nahal, saat shri akal. One will be eternally blessed who says that God is the ultimate truth. The last stand at Saragari had bought the forts enough time to call reinforcements in. The next day, after intense artillery fire, the British crushed the troops encamped at Sahagari and crushed the Afghan rebellion. It was reported that 21 Sikhs, up against an army of 500 times their size, had killed over 180 men and wounded hundreds more. When news of the battle reached the British Parliament, it was received with a standing ovation. They released an official statement saying that the British, as well as the Indians, are proud of the 36th Sikh Regiment. It is no exaggeration to record that the armies which possess the valiant Sikhs cannot face defeat in war. The Battle of Saragari is also the only recorded engagement in history where all of the combatants received the Order of Merit III, the highest honor a soldier could receive in the British military. But was this battle truly a great triumph? Perhaps the deeper tragedy here is that the Sikhs died for a colonial empire, sacrificing their lives and displaying true valor to the benefit of the British. And despite being one of the greatest feats in military history, its long-term effects are questionable to say the least, for this victory did little to prevent the inevitable tragedy for Great Britain. In less than 25 years, the British would lose all influence over Afghanistan, and 50 years later, after the battle, they also lost their Indian Empire, the jewel of their crown. However, in contempt of this debate, the Battle of Saragari still serves as a reminder of the valiant achievements of men and women loyal to their mission. Stories of groups of people who have sacrificed their lives for their nations, overshadowed by larger conflicts and movements on the global scale. The forgotten history of acts of bravery and heroism as exemplified here in the last stand of Saragari.